Ola emi your question, please. If no. Uh, yeah. Okay, my question is, where does the believer um, draw the line between church and state? Because uh, um, it's almost as if, you know, the believer takes uh, like a back seat in when it comes to state matters, issues of governance and, you know, government and policies and the entire polity of things. And I mean, we are in this world, but we are not of this world, but we interact with the day-to-day -day dealings of this world and the leadership that is in place. Jesus sets a precedence, and for me, Piflo, this is for you to, of course, answer and demystify, that, you know, he, he came into the heat of such a time, was a Roman government, actually met them in Roman captivity and left them in Roman captivity. And I want to think, because of his mission, but he, there's a role for the believer to play, and this is why I say this. For instance, someone like a Peter had joined an activist group which was the Zeliotis. That's why they call him Peter the, the Zeliotis. I, I think that's correct in the Bible. That's like a, like a movement that was hoping to topple the Roman government at some point. And actually, he actually thought, uh, saw Jesus' ministry as a fast track, as an acceleration to achieve this goal. And for, as a matter of fact, that's why I think he cut the hair of the Roman soldier and says, this is not what we planned. We were supposed to take over, you know, but Jesus had a, a more spiritual takeover that was going on, which was to unseat this spiritual government. And coming back into recent modern history, we find the roles of people like Bishop, uh, Reverend King, fighting for the emancipation of black people, I think 1945 or something like that. And it's almost like in Nigeria, it's, like, it's almost like we against them. And church doesn't really know what role we play, where we come in and where we draw the line between church and state. And it's as, if, as a matter of fact, some Christians don't even vote. They don't, they're not really keen. People don't even know what's happening in the legislature, legislative, the executive, the presidency. The judiciary. Yeah, we just, you know, so where, does, where do we zip up this divide? Very good question. So rich a question, by the way. Um, I think um, I, I taught it one time. I've forgotten how I titled it. But I'll, but, I'll, but I'll show you where it is. First of all, it's religion that has driven us to, especially the church in Nigeria. So Jesus said to us, go into the word and preach the gospel. We started singing songs. We never, never go back to the world. Never go back. <laughs> but the Bible says, go into the world. So, and, uh, you know, and then we, we did not understand, come out of among them and be separate. So we preached, come out of among them and being separate as being stay away from politics and government. I was talking to one of the um, fathers of the nation who said to us that there was a time that they were begging elites, even in church, to come into government. But they were not interested. That's when hoodlums got into government in the first election, democratic election. I don't want to mention some names. They were not supposed to be there that if the elites got into government then, it would have been a different Nigerian. Now, the reason I took this chair is the gospel is four gospel: Matthew, Mark, Luke, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. So, in Matthew, you see Jesus as the King of Kings. That is politics and government. In Mark, you see Jesus as the serving Savior. That is industry, commerce. Yeah. In Luke, you see Jesus as the emancipator, mankind. That is formal and informal education, entertainment, education, whatever. There. In John, you see Jesus as divine. So John doesn't portray Jesus as the king of kings like Matthew did. They didn't portray Jesus as the seventh savior who went about doing good like Mark did. They didn't portray Jesus as the humanitarian who is Dr. Luke. But portrayed him as in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So the church has to be sitting on one leg, the divine. Where we should have people in church who are into politics and government, who are into commerce and industry, who are into entertainment, and he, and of course we have a strong force here. That's how that's how it works. So I'm looking for people. I, I think I asked one day people who are interested in politics. We did. We we saw them. I already have a, a good number of entertainers here in church. So I, I am very sure I can influence the entertainment industry in another five years positively. I can count over five known actors even in midweek services here so we can find a way to get into that place 
Our divine position is strong. I'm, I'm training and believing God for people in commerce and industry. Um, people like the ones who are here, Dikin Adim, um, MI, Minister Mike, Minister Ini, uh, um, uh, Mandela and co. People who are into business that can, you know, because you need that too. Then you need people in government. Yeah. So the teaching of the church is vertical and horizontal. I say that every Sunday. So you vertically receive his love that you may horizontally dispense. So what do we do when we come into such places? We dispense the very, the very value system of heaven. Kingdom into that place. Anything that is not these two sticks is a stick, not a cross. And so the church has taught stick for a long time. And that's why they keep hitting people with it. So it must be cross. So what I mean is when you get to entertainment, there should be that part of you that shines forth in the entertainment, in business, in formal and formal um, education. People like Nena, Caro, name them. That just shows naturally there. But we, I'm, I'm aiming people who come into governance and we need people who are in commerce like you, who are in the business place. So one of the ways the church can do church, you can do church and state effectively without becoming a nuisance it starts from your office. It's not actually starting from the riot or from the protest. It starts from your office. What are you doing in your office? Who are you influencing? Are you taking charge? Do you know that you are now the light of the world, not the light in the church? And you're the salt of the earth, not the salt in the church. The reason why the church is so harsh is there's too much salt in the church. And anytime you see salt in your food, it's poison. Salt is supposed to be felt, not seen. Yeah, so we need to teach that again. I need to teach that again and how that you can be that. But the truth is, anybody who has accurately received the gospel naturally, it will flow in their office. There will be something about that guy. He's effective, he's excellent, he will deliver, he's up. That it will be natural, it will come out in you. This is true. So when we teach the gospel and tell them, go into the world, take over, not leave the world and come to. Yes, they, no, 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 no. Go in there, take charge. And we have to go as a gang, not as, you know, full gang. How many of us are going there? Let's go there and take over. Yeah, so I'm going to have a politic, a, a politic class in, in church, a class for people who are in politics to meet with the, with, 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 with the priest and say, okay, you know what? This is what you should do. This is how we will navigate it. And we, we need to come as a block, even as the church in Nigeria. Because our other side, they have a block. They have a block, yeah? But the primary assignment of the church is to teach the gospel, not to get into politics, not, not charity. So our, our job is teach you the gospel. And the gospel is vertical and horizontal. Yeah, so when Peter, with all his gang, got into the revelation of Jesus, he left that and was teaching, became the head of the church. So if the church understands the gospel, it will change Nigeria will become responsible. So I don't know why you wouldn't have your PVC. I have mine. But I know that, why are we talking about politics today? I want to talk about Jesus. I know that, that the next election is more of the selection, not the election. So people like me, when we pray, we pray about the selection. Because if you select two thieves, there's no need going to vote. A thief is going to get into power. So it's in the selection. And what, what happens in the selection is the local government. I hear there's a local government election. This this. This weekend, are you aware? Saturday, do you even know who they are voting for? You won't come out and vote. Let's 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 we'll talk through now. But your 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 local government is getting bad. The roads are bad. That means some of us should get in, get involved and even know what's going on. I know what's what's going on in my community where I stay in Lake Ivison. I'm involved. What's the renovation going here? I want to start from there. You mastered it, then you move into Lekki Large, and you know exactly what is happening. But we must be involved. We must be involved. We must be involved. So the church and state, the church shouldn't be quiet about state issues because we need the state to even do church. Yes. But we must be involved. Any other question before?